In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to instance redshift lights within Houdini. You can see I've got a scene set up here with this cube thing, just so we've got something to light, and I've also got a camera in here. Let's just hide that for now. I'm going to come up to the redshift menu, come down, add in an RS light. Now you can see it in the viewport, and it's added in an area light. Let's select that, switch to the light tab, come down. I'm going to change that to be a spot rather than um, an area, just so we can see which way it's pointing more clearly. Let's set the rotation on that to be zero. So we've got the light there at the world center pointing along Z. I'm going to add in an instance node. And if we come up and switch to the instance tab, you can see here we have a field for the instance object. So we can just drag our object in there, which in this case is our redshift light. We need to switch point instancing on. I'm going to use fast point instancing and you can see in the viewport it's already created an instance of our light. If we dive inside you can see it's just using a regular SOPS add node and it's adding one point. We can add a transform just as we would with SOPS and then move that up. Let's just set the display flag here and scrub the Y value and you can see in the viewport the point moving upwards and if we jump up to the object level you can see there's our instance light so let's enable this cube thing. Let's come back inside. And what I'm going to do is just delete this and we can set up our own set of points. And this can work with any points that you create with any of your setups. I'm just going to use a grid to start with. Let's add in a transform so that we can move this up above the cube thing. So I'm going to grab the old gizmo and pull that up. Next, let's add in a scatter so we can scatter our points that we want. I'm going to set that to be 25 Finally, let's come down and add in a null just so that we keep this tidy. Let me just set that to out and um, set that to be the display flag, the render flag. And once we jump up, there we go. You can see all of our lights. So they're not pointing in the right direction. So we can fix that. The instance or the redshift lights will use the normal. So if we just add in a normal node, um, jump back up and you can see now that they are pointing correctly based on the normal of our grid. Let's add in um, a mountain SOP now afterwards, just to add some deformation, and that will adjust the normal direction. So I'll just show that that's working if we increase the amplitude here. And let's um, jump back up, and there we go. And you can see there are all our instance lights. If we start the render view, we should see the result. And there we go. It's a little bit washed out, so we can select our light um, we can maybe adjust the angle of the cone so it's a bit more clear each individual light maybe reduce the intensity a bit you might find that you need to restart the render view to see the changes there we go and you can see that's working now let's take the camera in a little bit closer now what if you want to have different instances or other variations like color etc you can use attributes. So if we remove the instance object from that link and we can actually set some attributes on our points instead, dive inside and after this scatter, I'm gonna drop down an attribute create. And let's drop that in. And we're gonna come up and we're gonna call this instance. And this is actually a string. And what we need to do is put the path to our instance object. So if we come up and just stop the parameter following us, we can go up one level and drop that in you can of course just type the path in there we go so if we just come back you can see that the instance object isn't in the link field here but it's actually reading the attribute which we created which has the string path I and mean, you can see if we middle click there is our instance attribute on our points next i'm going to add in an attribute randomize and you can see it's set to cd color but i'm going to change that to light color and that's one of the attributes the redshift light will support but when we start the redshift render view, you can see that it's not actually working. So we need to come back to our instance node. And if we switch to the redshift object under settings, instancing, we have an option for light instancing. And you can see it's using a common shared shader. We need to change that to use individual shaders. If we change that, come back down and start the render view, you can see that now we are indeed getting random light color. The Redshift Light instances also support light temperature and light intensity as attributes. If you want more control over those colors, you can uh, map them with a gradient. So I'm going to set that back to generating CD, which is our color diffuse. I'm going to use first dimensions parameters for all, so it creates gray values. Next, I'm going to add in a color node. And the color node will allow us to choose ramp from attribute and rewrite that back to the color attribute so we're going to use color write it back to color but then we're going to map that to a 
gradient let's just pull a couple of these colors off so it's a bit simpler so now we've got this purple through to orange it's currently the cd attribute so now i'm going to just choose an attribute rename i'm going to rename from cd to light underscore color which will then take that gradient and hopefully when we press play on our render view we should see that color then mapped let's just give that a try and there we go and you can see that's now working so you can actually control it very easily through a gradient and of course there are other ways of doing this this is a nice quick way of doing it um, directly in SOPS. There we go. If we change that blue, you can see it is indeed doing what we want. Well, it's a bit ugly, but there we go. Let's maybe bring that pink to be a bit brighter. Okay, there we go. So the other thing that you might want to do is change the type of light. At the moment, we've got one. Let's just duplicate this, and I'm going to change the angle of this one to be 20. Come back to our RS Light 1 and change this to be 40. And we can use the instance attribute to link to that second light. So if we come in, we've got our attribute create. I'm actually just going to disable that for now. And let's pull all this down and add in another attribute randomize. And instead of randomizing color, what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to randomize the instance. And we need to set this to be a path. And to do that, we can choose custom discrete as the distribution and then type string. Just going to delete these two. For some reason, the field here looks a bit small. Um, we need to put the string in there. We can just type that in. And there we go. There's our RS light one. Let's just add in the second path to our RS light two. And of course, you can add more of these paths. And hopefully you can see the full path more clearly. But to check whether that's worked, you can jump up. And there we go. You can see we now have two different types of spotlight. And you can see that pretty clearly. So I hope you enjoyed that quick tip on instancing Redshift lights onto your points using custom attributes. And for more free tutorials, please visit hellolux.com. Thank you.